I'm not big for you. Mm -hmm. I'm big for me. Wow, like, um, because I really thought I was on my way. Only you can stop you. Go for it. Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy, and welcome back to Inspired Living TV. Have you ever driven around one of those really fancy neighborhoods and want to know what in the world these people did to live in that type of home? Well, that's exactly how my guest today started his $13 billion company. And I want to find out how he did it, and I'm sure you do too, so let's go in and find out. You would probably think that the founder and chairman of the second largest privately held lending company in the country was born with a silver spoon and graduated from an Ivy League school. But Glenn Stearns grew up in the projects of Maryland, where drive-bys and drug transactions were a daily occurrence. He fathered a child at 14 and barely graduated from college with a 2.16. So how did Glenn Stearns create a company that yielded over 13 billion in revenue last year? Find out in this Inspired Living TV interview. So yes, we are sitting down with the fabulous Glenn Stearns at his beautiful home here in Newport Beach. And Glenn is the founder and chairman of Stearns Lending, the second largest privately held company. Just did a, a mere 13 billion last year. And yes, I did say billion. Um, Glenn, thanks for sitting down with me today. Thanks. No, I'm enjoying it. I'm glad we got the time to get together. Yeah, you're a busy man. I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> so you started out, it's such a great kind of rags to riches story where you are from the projects in Maryland where there are some shady things going on and you drove out to Orange County and knocked on a door. Like you literally like were like, what? I ask that question all the time when I'm driving around, like what do these people do? Exactly. And that's kind of how it started for you. So tell me a little bit about how you got, I know it's a big story, but how you actually got where you are from where you started. Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm from Maryland and uh, I did grow up uh, pretty poor, you could say, bars on the windows, the whole thing, you know, and, and um, uh, had decided, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of make something in my life and go to college. Of course, that was before I had failed fourth grade, had a child in eighth grade, and, um, and we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's a whole lot of information. Lot, yeah. <laughs> and you actually kind of like skirted by college too. I mean, like I wouldn't point... call a 2.16 skirting <laughs> by. I think I had a whole was .16. Nice job. Uh, yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I had some, some room in there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I did, uh, yeah, I, I came out after college, uh, drove out with a buddy and, um, found myself sitting on a bench out in Corona Del Mar by myself. And I was just sitting there looking out at the ocean and I just became inspired. You know, I thought, what do these people do? <laughs> what do they do? This <laughs> life, you know, they have these homes and yeah. they live this lifestyle and the cars. And so I was just sitting there and I just thought, I'm gonna just ask them, you know, what does it take? So I saw a man in his yard and, and I walked up to him and I said, how did you get this house? You know, what does it take? I can do it. I know I can. Just tell me what tell I have me. to do. And he's like, Senor, I'm the gardener. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe the man's in real estate. And I was like, I can do real estate, okay, you know? And and so I literally, I went back to my friend. We had drove across country and he wanted to start heading back. And I said, I'm gonna stay. He's like, what do you mean you're gonna stay? You know, I said, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try real estate. <laughs> I had no idea what that meant, you know? And I became a, I became a, uh, a waiter. I think that's what you do when you start real estate, right? Right, that or act when you're <laughs> in acting, acting, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> started as a waiter, and then I started as a loan officer, and I did that for 10 months. Um, and I started my own company after that. And they say ignorance is bliss. It's right. very true. You know, I did not know what I did not know, which was, which was lucky, and, and just uh, started a company with another, another guy. And... Um, and again, just completely naive, not knowing what I was running into or, you know, and, and it was um, the most fun and the most difficult thing I'd ever done mm -hmm. to this day. That is truly amazing. Within 10 months, you just said, I'm going to start my own. I'm going to do, I'm yeah. going to start my own company. And was that the same company that you built to what you have now as the same chairman company. of Stearns? Still same company. That's yeah. just amazing. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, one of those 
you know, dreams of, you know, I just, uh, let's go do it. And I didn't even know what it was that we were going to do, but, you know, <laughs> let's become a mortgage broker. And the minute that happened, I thought, well, I want to be a mortgage banker, you know? And so I thought, all right, how do you do that? So I just kept asking people, you know, I went and I was asking the wrong people. I would go to the HUD, to the government and say, I want to be a mortgage banker. Now, now that I know what I know, they don't know what it means to be a mortgage right. banker. But, <laughs> They're like, okay, good luck with yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> But they were helping me. They were giving yeah. me, you know, you need a credit line. You need this and that. And I would just go to the bank. Hey, I'd like a credit line. <laughs> you want a credit line? Do you need history, you know, mm -hmm. and things. So it just I began to learn and, and it took some time. And, and, you know, sooner or later, it just continued to grow. And, and um, we started doing really well, you know, and, and I, was, I was surprised. But what I found I was pretty good at was really finding good talent. You mm -hmm. know, it was more about finding your weakness and filling those gaps. And so that's what I began doing is just just really searching for great people to mm -hmm. come in and, and join the organization. And, and we just kept growing and growing. And it sounds like it was so easy, because I know we don't have a lot of time, but I know there was a lot more that went on with that. But for, for someone who's watching this, Glenn, who says, okay, he grew up in the projects, you had a child at 14, Yes. You know, you drove out here and decided that you wanted to get into real estate. And it sounds like, okay, within a year I had my own business and it was doing really well. Like what were, what were some of the challenges, you know, that you came up against as you were building this business, realizing, you know, I, you didn't ha probably have credit or. Right. So how, how did you how do it? How did you do it? Because I, I know a lot of people and they think I can't even get started mm -hmm. because it's too big of a project. Mm -hmm. How do you get from here to there? And I can only tell you it's if you take a look at the overall scope of where you want to go, it's overwhelming and any goals that we have in life. But if you just take little bits at a time and you go for it and slowly building yourself, you can get there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's been something that I'm really pretty good at, at, at looking at here to there saying, I can get to there. I know I see it, mm -hmm. right? That's the vision. That's what you're right. talking about. <clears throat> it's not so far out in front of you, right? Right. It's just closer. Right. And now we all want to, you know, see the vision way out. I'm sitting on a yacht. I've right. got my <laughs> private plane and, and you go, okay, I can't get there. It's right. too much yeah. in the way. And I still need to make my mortgage payment, right? right exactly. <laughs> but if you say, I only need to get to here, which is I want to replace myself. And that means I need more, I need more volume. I need more business. I need more whatever it is. Then you've got to start there. How do you get to that? And then the next one is I want to hire a controller, whatever these things right. are, you know, and you keep building by just going to those steps. It, when you look at it that way, it feels, well, it's going to take a long time. Mm -hmm. Right. And then people give up again. And yeah. that's the part about so many people give up, right? Because yeah. it's too hard or it's too long or it's, you know, too much work. And, 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 but that's the point of any body or any business that's been successful. It, it didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, you get some lucky people and that's, that's, you know, a, a company goes and starts and they become some big IPO and that's, that's one in a billion. Right. You can't look at that. Right. The rest of us, right. Right. Us we normal folk. We get out every <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. We got to work hard and we got to just look at these little tiny base hits and don't look for the home runs all the mm -hmm. time and and you know again and 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 have some lucky breaks along the way you know I, I I've been very fortunate in times when things went uh, south where like in our business we're controlled by interest rates and mm -hmm. when interest rates go up and there's no business left right now what do you do right. you know those kind of things and so you know having I walked into uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development and I said can I do your business? Again, not understanding what that meant. And they said, you need a contract. And I said, okay, what's a contract? How do I get a contract? <laughs> you know, not knowing. Right. And, and, and again, I think there's a lot of people at home and a lot of people that, that, that say, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing either. Right. That's but, okay. But you went out and what I'm hearing and what I love that I'm hearing is that you went out and asked questions. Right. And you weren't afraid to ask questions. Right. And to find the people and the help to, to get no. you where you wanted. I, I think because most people go, I don't know. So then they they just stay. There's never, and I say this, it's true. There's never a dumb question. And if you're, if you just have the nerve to ask the question, mm -hmm. you know, most people love to help, right? And you want to 
feel good that, oh, they've asked me something and they give advice. So finding these people, these mentors, great people that you, you aspire to be and just saying, hey, can I take you to lunch or can I just talk to you about how did you do this? Mm -hmm. You'll find the same common thread, I think, of people have integrity, people don't give up, people work harder than most. All these little things that are so simple, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not hard. Just you do what you say, you know, don't right. screw people, you right. know, some basic things and then eke it out, eke it out. And you'll look back and you'll keep going, oh, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting farther along, getting, and then you get to a point where people really start believing in your dream. Yeah. And then they add on and then the momentum can become so big and fast and, you know. And be, that's when it gets fun. But you really have to, I, I always say it's like pushing a boulder up a hill for a long time. Like yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But at some point, there's a tipping point where the momentum, but most people will just be like, I'm too tired. Like, right. I'm not, I'm not pushing this boulder anymore. Right. And that's, that's, that's exactly, I, I've, I've seen that so many times. And, and I got, my, one of my lucky breaks was when my friend pushed that boulder and gave up and I walked over and just tilted it over the other side and took his momentum hmm. and he quit and I ended up. He quit. Yeah. And, and I thought, and I and we're still best still friends talk? this day. <laughs> yeah, but I said, He's like, "Damn you!" Came that close. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, he he literally he quit, and he received a phone call from an agent that needed help with a loan, and I and he had quit, so I took the call and I went to that agent that became my number one agent. I got. 15 agents after that behind that agent because of that my business kept going and then it continued to really grow but i i it happened because the other guy quit i wouldn't have had that link you know right. and so glenn you're amazing well thanks you're amazing you're amazing <laughs> um, so if people want to find out more about your charity how do they do that uh you can go on to i believe it's lifechanginglives.org mm -hmm. Lifechanginglives.org. Um, yep, org. we'll put the link below. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to glennsterns.com, I believe, or mindysterns.com, or, <laughs> <laughs> or, or the next <laughs> website. Um, well, I know that we could talk about so many other things, and um, but, but before I wrap up, I want to quickly talk about what the board that you're on now, um, Horatio Alger, and what's like that passion project for you in, in just a little bit of time? Can right. you tell us a little yes. bit about that? That is, um, yeah, that's my, my uh, that's the one for me right now. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful organization. It deals with children um, that have been through a lot of adversity, okay? Uh, Horatio Alger gives out 104 scholarships a year to um, 40,000 applicants we have. 40,000. And it's, Amazing. it's kids that are that are in 11th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade that are going into college. And we give out these college scholarships. And you have to have been through some uh, pretty tough times and then yet have decided you are not a victim. You're a victor, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be somebody that is going to um, pull themselves out of their situation through education. And you're going to try to break the patterns of your family or whatever. And so we see so many of these wonderful kids that said, I don't want to live like my parents, like my brothers and sisters, and I want to do the right thing. So it's a, it's a, it's a passion project for me. I really believe in it. Um, it's HoratioAlger.org as well. And um, and you're on the board with, and, and part of... Is, I am. I mean, you have some very influential people on that. It was a great uh, organization. I'm the youngest ever to be on the board. I am proud of that. And um, uh, it's got everyone from Ronald Reagan was a Horatio Alger to Oprah Winfrey, Condoleezza Rice, uh, Judge Clarence Thomas, mm -hmm. um, a lot of great, great um, people that are, are in the organization. So I'm, I'm proud to be associated yeah. with it. Redneck from Maryland. Redneck You've from come Maryland. a long way, Glenn Stearns. Hey, let's go have a Budweiser. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for watching this Inspired Living interview. Do you want more inspiration? Of course you do. So subscribe and go over to inspiredliving.tv. And if this inspired you, we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear how this interview with Glenn maybe helped you or is going to inspire you to do something that you're really passionate about. So please post your comments below, share it with your friends, and remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Till next time.